Okay, so I just wanted to make a few videos for you guys, or I'm sorry, one video for you guys, covering a few problems from your book just to see how to work through them. So really quickly, starting with separation of variables, let's see. Suppose we have this, y, y prime minus 2e to the x equals 0. If I want to solve that, well, we said the first step is to rewrite y prime as dy dx. So y dy dx minus 2 e to the x equals 0. And now separate the variables. In this case, I'm going to keep the y's on the left and the x's on the right. So I'll just add the 2 e to the x over. So I get y dy dx equals 2 e to the x. Now get rid of the d to the x, multiply it. And we get y dy equals 2e to the x dx. Now we separated the variables. We have the x's on one side and the y's on the other. So we get rid of the dy and the dx, integrate both sides. When you do that, antiderivative of y is y squared over 2. I know there's a plus c, but like we did in class, I'll just bring it all to the right. Equals antiderivative of 2e to the x. The 2 carries along, and that's just e to the x. And then we have our plus c. And then if you want, multiply the 2 over. You get y squared equals 4e to the x plus 2c. And then if you want, you can square root both sides, and you get y equals plus or minus the square root of 4e to the x plus 2c. And that's fine. Like I said in class, you can leave it like that. If you want to find y explicitly, you can do that. If you don't like having 2c, so this, since this is just 2 times a constant, if you want, for the purposes of this, you can just call this c1 and say c1 equals 2c, because it's just a different constant. Okay, good. So we have that one. Now we'll do another separation of variables. So let's see. Suppose we have dr ds equals e to the r minus 2s. We want to separate the variables, but in this case, that's an exponential with both r and s in the power. So what do we do? Assuming we remember our rules for exponents, we know we can rewrite this as dr over ds equals e to the r e to the negative 2s. Now, the exponentials and the variables are separated, so now just do my algebra. Let's see. dr is on top, ds is on bottom, so I'll multiply the ds, and I'll get e to the r, e to the negative 2s ds equals dr. And now, I'll bring this r over to this side. So I will get, you can write it however you want, dr over e to the r equals e to the negative 2s ds. Just to make the antiderivative easier, rewrite that as a negative power. e to the negative r dr equals e to the negative 2s ds. Now we have r's on one side, s is on the other, so integrate both sides. Antiderivative of e to the negative r. Rewrite the exponential and then multiply by the derivative of the power, or divide by the derivative of the power, which is just negative 1. So we'll just stick a negative out in front. Equals antiderivative of e to the negative 2s. Rewrite e to the negative 2s, and then divide by the derivative of the power, which is negative 2. And then we have our plus c carry along, carrying along. And again, from there, if you want to stop there, you can. If you want, as we did in class, there's a negative here, a negative here, and a positive there. Multiply everything by negative 1, and you get e to the r equals e to the negative 2s, e to the negative r, I'm sorry, all over 2 minus c. That's fine. If we want to explicitly solve for our function, in this case r, Bring the r down, take the ln of both sides. ln of both sides, ln of e cancels, and you get negative r equals ln of e to the negative 2s all over 2 minus c. Keep in mind, for the purposes of this, 
ln of the sum can't be separated. ln of the product can be broken up. ln of the sum can't, so just leave it like that. And then if you want to get r by itself, just divide by negative 1. So r equals negative ln e to the negative 2s all over 2 minus c. In theory, you could bring that negative 1 in as a power, but don't bother doing that if you don't want to. But there we go. Straightforward and direct. Okay. Now, just really quickly, I looked through all the applications of exponentials in your book from the previous section. And much like I said in class, there's not a lot there. But if we look at, say, problem 51. I know I gave you, I think, 52 for homework. In exercises 51 to 54, the population in millions of a country in 2011 and the expected continuous annual rate of change K of the population are given. Find the exponential growth model for the population. Use the model to predict the population of the country in 2020 and discuss the relationship between the sign of K and the change in population for the country. So, just to kind of write all that down, we're doing for this one Latvia. We're told in 2011 the population is 2.2 million, and we're told K, the growth rate, is negative 0.006. And it says, find the population growth model, P equals C, E to the KT. And in this case, let's see, we are told to let T equals 0 be 2010. So I know K, so P equals C e to the negative point zero zero six T. In order to get this model, I need to find the value for C. To find the value for C, plug in time equal to zero, I'm sorry, time equal to one and 2.2 million. If I do that, let's see, when time is one, P is 2.2 million. So 2.2 equals C e to the negative point zero zero six times 1, which is negative 0 0.006. Now just solve for C. All of you know how to do this. Divide the C on both sides. 2.2 over C equals E to the negative 0 0.006. And now let's see. Well, I'll take the ln of both sides. ln of 2.2 over C equals negative 0 0.006. And the only problem here is, well, ultimately I'm solving for C, but now it's inside of an ln. But ln of a quotient is a difference, so that becomes ln of 2.2 minus ln of C equals negative 0 0.006. In one step, just so, or maybe we'll go over here, change color so we can see better, I am going to add the ln of C to the right, and then add the point zero zero six to the left. So I'll get ln of 2.2 plus point zero zero six equals ln of C. Now, I want to get C by itself. So take the, make, raise each side to the ln, to the E, I'm sorry. And we'll get E to the ln of 2.2 plus 0 0.006 equals C. I'm aware when you're doing this, given that you have a calculator, you could have simplified this and done some calculations along the way, but I like writing things out algebraically, so I did it long form. Here, if you want, you can just plug that into the calculator, or algebraically, that's E to the ln of 2.2 times E to the 0 0.006. E to the ln of 2.2 cancels, and you get 2.2 times E to the point 0, 0.006 equals C. Like I said, these cancel, you're left with 2.2, and that just carries along. Now, just throw it into your calculator. And let's see, 2.2, where's the E button on this one? There we go. E to the point 0, 0.006. 2.21. C equals 2.21, and just for fun, I'll add another decimal, we'll say 213. Now I go back to the very beginning, and replace, let's see, we'll use this one right here. Replace C with 2.213. 
And now I have my population model right there. Okay. This is all algebra you should all be able to do. On the off chance you maybe need some review with it, figured I'd kind of work it out for you. But now I have a model, and now the second problem says, what's the population in 2020? Well, if this starts in 2010, in 10 years it's 2020, so time is 10. So you would just do P equals 2.213 times E to the negative 0 0.006 times 10. Throw it into your calculator and you're done. The other part of the problem says, discuss what that K being negative means. And you should all understand, this is an exponential equation. If K is negative, that's a decay model, which in this case means the population is going down. For some of the other problems, K is positive. It's a growth model, the population is going up. And we can actually explicitly see that this is our initial population in 2010. In 2011, we went from 2.213 million to 2.2 million. We went down, which makes sense. It's what we should get. That's all I'm going to go over. Again, the separation of variables, you have a few more examples other than the ones we did in class. And for most of the stuff in this section, it's pretty straightforward. It's more of a review of stuff you should already know. So if you're still a little bit questionable about it, questionable about it this should give you an idea of how to work through all the algebra correctly. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask in class or stop by my office.